Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to be looking at the best settings for Marvel Rivals. Video settings, audio settings, key and mouse, and a couple of extra things to help you out. Let's jump in. Our objective is to get you the most amount of frames possible with the best clarity available. Starting with the display side. Target display, primary, display mode, borderless window it is fine. If you want max FPS, you should use full screen. For anti-aliasing and super resolution type, there's a little conversation we need to have here. So first of all, DLSS is the best quality setting, especially on native. If you can't run native or have low frames, you can use balanced, performance, or quality. But what I do is I go to TAAU with 100% render scaling because this has less input lag, okay? So anytime you go to DLSS, you have input lag. When you go to TAU, you don't, just that easy. Frame generation mode, off, don't need it. Low latency mode, reflex low latency. Keep this off if you have an older card. Limit FPS, no. Show FPS, yes, we should be able to see how much we have. Network stats, sure, so you can see your ping. V-Sync, always off. Game language, English. Optimize settings, now don't use optimize, just use custom and put everything, that is everything, except textures on off or performance when it comes to model detail. This will net you the most amount of frames by using TAEU. With this, you have most frames, least input lag. Textures I have on high just for clarity and since you don't lose that many frames, but overall, these are my display settings. Moving on to audio. So for audio, what I need to mention is all of these individual volume sliders, scale, off, master. So lobby ambience, we don't need this music. If you're a fan of it, keep it on. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of it. Lobby music, still zero. In-game voice volume should be 100. Playback, headphones, 3D enhancement, off. Background playback, on. Input device, make sure you select your input device. Voice chat, I use the open mic for ranked. Otherwise, I disable voice chat when I don't want it. Voice chat, mic volume 80% for me. Voice over subtitles, I wouldn't recommend these, these clutter. Plus, you can hear the um, ultimates pretty easy from all the heroes that use them. Now, if you go to combat mix, you can change each of the sound effects individually. So, for example, if you want to hear the heal sounds higher, if you want to hear the damage volume higher, if you want to hear the announcer volume higher, probably not, right? You can modify each of these individually. For me, I had never had any issues just going 100% on sound effects and dropping master volume until it feels comfortable for me. So I wouldn't mess with this. Now let's take a look at keyboard and mouse settings. First of all, mouse settings. Horizontal for me, I have it at 0 0.4, running 7200 DPI. Vertical sensitivity, I have that lower. Because there's no recall control required in the game, this helps me track horizontally better when I'm flicking around trying to hit an enemy. I would definitely recommend using this. Also, this is gonna help you track better at long range since you're not gonna be overshooting with fine movements vertically. Invert horizontal, invert vertical, don't need that. Mouse smoothing, mouse acceleration, definitely don't need that. So I'm using a green dot, size 20, pretty standard. Now let's take a look at the keybinds I'm using. When it comes to movement, pretty much all standard. First of all, I don't use the scroll wheel for previous or next weapon. Hitting more keys means priming, so that means you're ready to perform more actions. So I would just not use the scroll wheel. This may be personal preference, but me, myself, I prefer swapping weapons with the actual number keys. It's faster, you don't overshoot, and you keep your fingers primed for shooting. Next, let's look, take a look at the abilities because I did change some of the keybinds here. Let's start with the melee attack. I'm using mouse button five for that. When it comes to ability one, I replaced E with C. And if you look at your keyboard, you're gonna see why. When you're strafing, when you're hitting WASD, if you go to hit Q or E, you're gonna take your finger off A or D. So I moved E to C and Q to V. So that means I'm always strafing and I'm using my thumb to hit C, V, or space. You're gonna see that I'm using my thumb on the bottom row for all of these, especially on space, while my fingers are still on WSD, ready to prime, ready to move, ready to do everything. And that's the logic. You'll see this with players. They're not gonna be able to effectively move right and use E because they're using the same finger to do it. So you'll you'll see players going left when they're using the E ability, or you'll see players going right when they're using the Q ability because they're crossing their fingers like that. Melee on mouse five, Ability one is C. Ability two, I left it on shift, that's fine. It works fine. Ability three, I moved to mouse four. Ultimate is on V, and team ups are B, N, and X. And environmental interaction is set to F. This is default, I think. When it comes to the UI, I didn't change anything except chronovision. Chronovision means you can see which structures can be destroyed on the map. So by me hitting caps every now and again, I can see what rotations, what flanks I can build by cutting through the map. All these are defaults, surrender vote default, communication, pretty much default. I just use the communication wheel, it's very good. And I have the eight section wheel, so that gives you fall back, retreat, attack, defending, ultimate, pretty much everything you need. Controller, not using a controller, can help you here. On the social tab, you can set your career profile visibility to friends only, everyone, private, depending on what you want to do. For chat, allow whisper, team, event, faction, and spectator messages. 
even if you turn all of these off, opponents will still be able to communicate to you in match chat. So I personally wouldn't uh, mess with these. On the social side, allow friend requests on, allow spectating, you can do friends only, for example. Invitation to team, room, friends only. Avoid his teammate, you can have a maximum of three players you can avoid. If you're climbing ranked, if you notice that there's players that are griefing, that are trolling, while you're in that rank, you might want to avoid them as a teammate because you might be matched against them or with them later by playing in that particular rank. Streaming mode, you can go to that to hide your name and do content protection, hide own name and other players' names. Not interested in that, but if you like to, you can definitely turn this on and put all players and hide own name, and content protection, like you can turn all of this on if you want to. For accessibility, I'm not using colorblind mode. The game looks Looks really clean as it is and the colors are very good i wouldn't recommend changing ally and enemy colors most people right like to customize this i know somebody that did pink and purple so like imagine if you're flipping around and you want to see somebody quick you're not going to be able to distinguish between pink and purple right you want to have the default blue and red or at least two colors that are very distinct over customizing can be an issue as well i would just leave all of these on default and just get used to that and that's pretty much my settings another little piece of software i always talk about is raw excel now, raw Excel is a piece of software for mouse acceleration. I don't like that. I don't use it for that. What I do use is the sensor rotation feature. Because I'm a wrist aimer, my hand naturally rotates a little bit when I track to the left or when I track to the right. Because of that, my crosshair goes up or down whenever I'm tracking horizontally. So what I do is I use the sensor rotation feature to reduce and eliminate all of those errors. One other thing before I let you guys go, Go to Blur Busters. All of these gaming monitors have special motion blur reduction, black sharpening, and other features you can take advantage of to have less ghosting and a cleaner, faster image. Go to UFO test, try to see if you have any ghosting at 120 or 240 FPS. If you go to the monitor list on Blur Busters, you're gonna be able to see the approved monitors and the name of the tech that is used to clarify the image. For example, I'm using a BenQ Zowie XL2746K and the motion blur tech for that is BenQ Diac and BenQ Blur Reduction. Most of these monitors have a hidden OSD or factory settings menu. Look up your monitor on Google and see how you can get to that menu so you can take advantage of the hidden features that your monitor may have. By just Googling your manufacturer and the factory menu, you can see that I immediately found a link on Blurbusters about how to get to the service and factory menus. Power off via power button, Hold the button number three and button number four with power off for five seconds and press power while still holding them down. Getting to these factory menus may be a little bit complicated, but it's definitely worthwhile as you'll have access to hidden settings that will help you improve clarity, visibility, ghosting, you name it. Definitely take the time to do this. And that's pretty much it for today's video. Let me know in the comments how these settings work for you. Also be on the lookout for the cloak and dagger guide dropping Monday or Tuesday. Don't forget to check out Mad Monk as well. I take focus in the morning, which is a caffeine tablet that gives you great energy, focus for about three to six hours. Great for gaming, work and studies. And I also end the day with Champion, on one multivitamin, also in tablet form. Try MadMonk today at no risk using my affiliate code with 100% money back guarantee. That's pretty much it guys. Subscribe to the channel, join the Discord, and I'll see you in the next one.